It's, there's a covering, there's a grace that overcomes us. There's a separation that comes when we're praying in the spirit. And I was thinking back to my coronavirus story because that is what is going to keep you separate because you're not like everybody else, yeah? You're not like everybody else. You can even claim it. You, I'm even sure, I don't know why I feel it's even dropped in my spirit. Even if you're not a Christian, God will hear you. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's the Sunday Sermon. And um, today I wanted to take us through a scripture that has really been resonating with me. It's in Jeremiah 33. Um, the one that's very famous is Jeremiah 33, 3, that says um, that God will tell you um, great and mighty things. There's a revelation that he will give to you. Uh, but then I read from verse 1 to 3, and um, I'm reading from the ESV. I've been really liking that, um, that particular, um, what's it called, translation. So verse 3, which is the one that everybody knows, says, Call to me and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. And Christianity is about revelation. It's about revealing the unknown and revealing it and making it known. And then um, either we usher it into being or we then know how to pray. So it's for giving direction. And I felt that, you know, the year is really fast drawing to a close and we need to call to God. And I, I actually what made me also... Uh, think about this scripture is that sometimes we say ah, but see God knows what I need um, or why do I have to keep telling him the same thing why do I have to keep repeating myself maybe some of us like for me I've been saying some prayers for a very 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 long time and even some have not been answered but the word of God says that you have to call so there's an action there's an action when the posture of coming before God is calling to him so that he reveals things to you. And so if you're stuck somewhere or you're not understanding or you don't understand maybe the will of God in a certain direction, this is the word. You know, you pick up the word and I like to speak God's word back to him. So I'll even pick up the Bible and say, Father, this is your word. Your word says that I should call to you and you will reveal yourself to me. You will tell me things that I do not know, hidden things, you know. Um, so that is important and key. And especially because when we're coming to the end of the year, there's also sometimes a sense of, it, of discouragement, but I want to encourage you. And I want to remind you that David said, encourage yourself in the Lord. You must be a person who encourages yourself. Encourage yourself through the word, through meditating on the word. Don't, don't act like everything is hopeless. It's not hopeless. I don't know why it was yesterday. I was just reflecting on my prayer list over the years and because I write a lot, I write a lot. I write prayers, I write my my revelation from a certain scripture at a certain time i'll write a date so i have many journals so one of the things i want to do is just one day sit to them there are very many sit to them and and and, and just read over them and, and remind myself of God and the revelation he has given me over the years and even see how it has changed and seasons have changed. And so I was sitting there thinking, you know, there's one of the prayers that I really prayed and that was for the healing of my dad and, and he didn't get well. Uh, but I was, as I was sitting there reflecting, saying, God, I have, I've called onto you and I called onto you regularly even about my dad and different things, but my dad passed. But as I sat there and thought, mm, should I blame God? He was like, mm -mm. If we journey, if I sit now and start telling you from the time your dad had his accident to how he lived his life, yes, I've healed him many, many times and I, I preserved him and he, and he was there for you and you could enjoy him. Um, yes, you don't like the fact that he's gone now, but then again, there's my sovereign will in the things that I do. So I don't know who that is going to encourage, but also call unto God, you know. Don't be like, you know, don't, don't have an attitude towards God like God should know what I need and anyway he hasn't even answered this one he, he's sovereign you know he's the one who gave me my dad actually I remember even at the funeral saying he didn't have a dad his dad died when he was I think under two um, but I had a dad for 54 years and and that's a that's a miracle and that's a grace and I, it also leads me to saying the English said in every cloud there's a silver lining you must look at what is right with this picture what is right what is the what is the thing that is right the things that are wrong, good. They're glaring. They usually magnify themselves. But what is right? And what is right? Like if I use my case and saying that God has not answered prayer. No, I haven't even sat down to think, to reflect, you know. Even the way my dad had his accidents and the recovery and being found and all, all those are miracles. 
So I wouldn't have had a dad, but I did. And then he left his legacy after after this accident. He he really left a legacy, and of course, he's written a book called Destined to Leave a Legacy. So that was what I was reflecting on. We have called unto God, and sometimes He doesn't answer the way that we want Him to answer. But the fact is, He still answered, and the fact is, He's still sovereign. So we must call. And then it got me to Exodus because of the blood of Jesus Christ. That there's a way I feel as Christians we don't call on that blood. Because if the blood of a lamb in Exodus, they were told to kill a lamb and then to put the blood on the doorposts and the angel of death would pass over, you know, because death had already been there. So the whole sign was death has already been here. So death cannot come again. It cannot come a second time. And then now we have the blood of Jesus Christ. Then one of the things I wanted us to do is um, this pandemic, this coronavirus is, uh, I don't want to say it's getting out of hand because I don't want to give it space and volume. It can't get out of hand. It cannot go above Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is Lord and he will cover us and he has given us a method. One of the things he's revealed is that you put the blood on the doorpost and the angel of death passes over. So now we don't even have, it's not the lamb, it's not a lamb, it's the, it's the actual lamb of God, it's Jesus Christ. Therefore, I felt a leading um, to lead all of us to pray, to call, to decree, declare that you're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And your household, don't forget your household, it can't just be you. When they did anything, it was the whole household was, was, was participating. The whole household was ready and prepared to go um, when they started their exodus. But the idea is calling, call to me call call in a loud voice call in a cry the other revelation i've been having is praying in the spirit it is such a powerful revelation that even as we're saying call to me and and he will reveal to you there are things that have already been revealed that we forget the blood of jesus christ we must speak it decree it plead it we must call with that so you can't call on the inside you call on the outside you must open your voice amplify your voice and call to the lord and then you have to pray in the Spirit. And somebody asked me, um, yesterday I was on a call, they said, um, can everybody pray in the Holy Spirit? Yes, but you have to desire it, yeah? You have to desire the, the need to pray in the Holy Spirit and you just ask God. And then some, sometimes when it starts, you don't even feel very, you don't feel very clever. You're like, what am I saying? But you just do what God is telling you to do and let him speak that language. And I think I will close with this. We've been, another revelation, you see? I like the way God flows. Um, just a few weeks ago, um, I was gathered with some people um, and I just felt the Lord say, the Holy Spirit say, pray for everyone, form a prayer circle around each person and pray for only one minute and put the timer on your phone and, and pray for each person for only one minute in the Spirit. Why? Because praying in the Holy Spirit is praying the will of God. You know, we could be praying A, B, C and God wants X, Y, Z. So when we pray in the Spirit, it produces what God wants, what his good, perfect, and pleasing will is, and not our will. Because we can be praying amiss and we can be praying against the will of God. And sometimes that may not be clear to us because even he says his ways are not our ways, you know. He has a way. He has revealed some things to us, but he hasn't revealed everything to us. There's a mystery surrounding him. So when you pray the Holy Spirit, it's powerful. Even this morning as I was coming, I've had a very busy week. And I was like, oh, I'm tired. I think I should be careful about the weeks when I'm doing filming. And sometimes I remind myself I'm not as young as I used to be, you know. Um, so I, had, I, I remembered, recharge yourself in the Holy Spirit. Because it's like the way we always charge our gadgets, our phone, our tablets, everything. We're always charging them. So that's exactly what you need. So I said, actually, what I need is to pray in the Spirit. So I prayed in the Spirit in a, in a, in a, for a while, and, and, I was, and I was fine. And I, I feel energized and ready to do what God has called me to do. So pray in the Spirit. When you get to situations that are desperate, when you get to situations that are sad, um, I also sense maybe something that's grievous, that we pray. We learn to pray in the Holy Spirit, yeah? And we learn to pray. You see, there's a, there's, it's like a covering. It's, there's a covering, there's a grace that overcomes us. There's a separation that comes when we're praying in the Spirit. And I was thinking back to my coronavirus story because that is what is going to keep you separate because you're not like everybody else, yeah? You're not like everybody else. You can even claim it. You, I'm even sure, I don't know why I feel it's even dropped in my spirit. Even if you're not a Christian, God will hear you. There's a power that the human being and the human spirit has. So you can say, this is not my portion. Me and my household, 
never ever. And that is a confession that you have made. And then you carry it around with faith and with grace, you know. When I look at Africa as I get ready to pray and uh, the coronavirus, we, and that's going to be my prayer, not only for individuals, but for the continent as well. There's no way the God of Africa has a reason. The, if the God of Africa has a reason and this virus must end. And then I was reflecting also yesterday as we pray, as we call out to the Lord so that he may, he may reveal and pray and we decree the end of this um, pandemic. Mm, I was thinking like in Kenya when it was announced, a lot of prayer went into place and I love it. I love the way we are. We're, even, we're, it's, we're like the Israelites in the Bible. Every time the Israelites would want something from God, everyone would enter serious prayer fasting. We're going crazy. When God has answered, ah, we've, well, they've gone. They've gone and done other things. So I feel like there's a call to prayer again. We need to pray again. We need to fast. We did. We got into prayer fast. I'm speaking from, about my own nation. And God averted uh, what they thought would be a very big crisis. So I feel like we need to call on to that God of Africa um, so that not only does he reveal, but he also blesses us, he touches us, he graces us with himself, and he protects us. We need to call on on, on, on the God who saves. That's what I feel, on the God who saves. We need to call on the God who saves. So call unto me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. And even in the answering, I feel like the Holy Spirit has asked me to say this. We must remember that the answer will not come the way we want the answer to come. That's another problem. It's like in your head, you've already formed an answer. So when you're calling, you already have the answer in your spirit. You know this is how it's supposed to pan out, but that's not going to be the way it's going to pan out. It could or it could not. Don't have an already decided way that this prayer must be answered. And it always brings me to the story of Abraham because we must have flexibility as Christians. We had an instruction, Abraham had an instruction, go and sacrifice Isaac. But the instruction changed just before he sacrificed Isaac. There was a ram in the thicket. Some of us will kill the child still because that's what God said. But the, something has changed. Something has turned. Now there's a ram. And God wanted to see your heart. And many times, I think that's a good teaching as well, that God wants to see our heart. What is our heart towards this? And maybe that's what he was doing yesterday when, he was, when I was reflecting on that my dad actually passed. He didn't get well. Yeah, but what's your heart? What's your heart towards me, Pastor Angie? What is your heart towards this situation? What is your heart towards the sovereignty of God, that I am a sovereign God. What is your heart towards how the world works and how I am working in your life? There's a heart story in it. And you know, in Bible school, they used to drive us crazy. I think I've told you that before. Hey, hey they used to drive us crazy with the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart. We, to, we never understood it, but the heart is everything. So as I pray, what I felt is God is bringing to our cities nations, families, children, marriages, individual lives, workplaces, enterprises, wealth creation models, avenues, ideas, and abilities, community and generations, health and healing, plus covenant, revelation, abundance, prosperity, and security. I feel like I want to say that again. Oh my goodness, you know? I remember writing, I said, yeah, the enemy COVID was coming to kill Africa with dead bodies strewn over it everywhere but god has stopped them and god is bringing because this is all in if you look at jeremiah 33 the whole chapter especially in this esv or any any version this is what it was saying this is what uh, the revelation i got as i read the word that god is bringing to our cities our nations our families our children our marriages our individual lives our workplaces our enterprises our wealth creation our community our generations health and healing Covenant, revelation, abundance, prosperity, and security. And the word of God says, Restore the fortunes of Judah, Israel. Rebuild us as we were at first. So there's a lot of restoration. I'm going to have to do another video on restoration. There's a lot of restoration that is taking place. So restore the fortunes and rebuild according to our patterns and our plan. This is our call. This is what we're calling to you, God. Restore the fortunes, rebuild according to your pattern and your plan. Reminds me of Matthew 6.10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Re um, so restore according to your pattern and plan our families, our marriages, our children, ourselves, our wealth creation, 
models, avenues, abilities, our nations, our regions, our cities, our continent, our land, our marketplaces and market spaces, our organizations, our enterprises, our generations, and our communities. And I said, cleanse us from all guilt of all our sins against God. Mercy prevails over judgment. Cleanse, heal, and forgive us all our sins towards you, God, and your people. And that is my call to action. God, forgive us. Forgive us our sin. Forgive us our guilt. Forgive us our rebellious ways. You know, this city, our families, our children, our marriages, businesses, ministries, workplace, enterprises, our people, our communities, our cities, our nations, and our generations. Whatever it is that we have done and sinned against you because I feel sometimes we are very entitled. We are entitled to the blessings of God, but it doesn't work that way. You know, we have, we have sinned against God. We have, we have things that we have done that are not pleasing to God. And therefore we ask that you read and forgive us of this sin and this rebellion and cleanse us from everything that is not of you. So let me lead you to Christ. And then let me pray. Because it's about calling. It's about calling, calling on Jesus Christ. Calling on him so that he may come and do great and mighty things in our lives. So first let's connect with God because that's a good call. Call to action is to connect your spirit with his spirit. Um, in John chapter 6 he says, I'm seeking those who will worship me in spirit and in truth. So let me lead you to Christ. Um, say, Lord Jesus. I ask you to come into my life, to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Take over every area of my life. Forgive me my sins, my, any kind of rebellion or guilt that I may have or that the enemy can accuse me of and bless me with your salvation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let me pray about the very many things that I've talked about, um, that I feel that salvation and healing and deliverance must come to this city, to this continent, to the nation, to the people of God, and that we're calling on to you and that we're covering ourselves with the blood of Jesus Christ. We're praying in the spirit. We're decreeing and declaring that you are God and there is no other. And that us and our, our nations, our families, we are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And it doesn't matter what the enemy is planning. And whatever shape, size, and form that enemy comes in, it will not be our portion. As for me and my household, that is your prayer. Coronavirus, COVID-19, anything that God has not ordained is not your portion. And that is our prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to bless you and to give you praise. I thank you for the word of God in Jeremiah 33, 3, where you ask us to call unto you and you will tell us things. You will reveal things, you know. You will, you will reveal the hidden things to us, Lord. So I think maybe my first point is revelation. Revelation for each and every person who is listening, who is watching, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, whatever revelation we need in whichever area, that you will reveal hidden things. And I pray that as you reveal, that we don't protest, Father, that we don't begin to say why certain things cannot happen, that we will trust you in your revelation and as you move us forward, we will flow with you. I also want to pray and to plead the blood of Jesus Christ on this great nation and on the, on the continent of Africa as well, on individuals and families and organizations and enterprises and cities and nations and villages and homesteads and regions um, and enterprise and communities I just want to plead the blood of Jesus Christ on marriages, on children, on families, on formation of families, Lord. I just want to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everything concerning our nations, concerning the continent, concerning the body of Christ. Decreeing and declaring, Father, that, that the coronavirus and the COVID-19, first of all, it has to end. And number two, we place the blood of Jesus Christ on us and entire households and no harm can come to us. Death has already come because we're born again and we have aligned ourselves in covenant with Jesus Christ. Therefore, death cannot come a second time. Therefore, we decree that we are covered, we are blessed, we are protected, we are loved. We decree whatever plans the enemy has, they are stopped, Father, 
The word of God says that when the enemy comes, the Holy Spirit lifts up a standard. I'm asking you, Father, to lift up a standard in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to lift up a standard on this continent. I'm asking you to lift up a standard globally, Father, and to end this pandemic and to end this virus and to end all this drama in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, Lord, I sense in my spirit that there's going to be just a way. You know, I feel like it's a showdown. Like there's a showdown that's about to take place where it is the enemy versus God. And Father, you're going to win. And we pray that you win this battle, that the God of Africa arises, that you cover us, you protect us, you love us, you nurture us and you nudge us into all that you have ordained for us, Lord. I pray for this revelation about praying in the spirit, Lord, that Lord, you will just urge us, nudge us, speak to us to pray in the spirit, to form prayer circles around homes, around individuals, around families, around enterprises, around situations. Everyone who has been negatively impacted uh, by this uh, coronavirus and the COVID-19 pandemic, we decree that God forms a prayer circle around you and that we begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. And as we do, different things and different gifts and different expressions take place. In my spirit, I can see like chains breaking because that's the word of God in Isaiah 61 verse 9. That the word of God says that he has anointed us to proclaim freedom for the captives, to release prisoners from dungeons and from bondage. So right now, in the name of Jesus, with the grace, the authority, the anointing that God has placed in my life, I proclaim your freedom from every form of captivity. I decree that you are released from every dungeon and every prison. Your eyes are opened and anyone who has been negatively impacted by this pandemic, I decree your release. I decree God's glory. I decree that he opens your eyes, that he makes a way where there is no way and there are solutions. I'm actually seeing in my spirit like a hand just taking you and drawing you out of everything that the enemy has thrown your way, but pouring out the spirit of God and the presence of God to bring you out and to bring you out in glory and to open your eyes. I decree revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. Just like Hagar, she was crying, but right before her was a well. And God opened her eyes and she saw her solution. May you see your solutions and may you testify of the goodness of God. And I urge you to call unto God so that he may reveal his good, perfect and pleasing will and way for you and your generation and your lot. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a powerful Sunday in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.